Hello, you're watching Enemy. We're at Leeds Festival 2017 with Blossoms. How you doing, mate? You all right? Not bad, mate. How are you? Very well. Good. Uh, so you're about to go into the signing tent yeah. and meet your fans. What are your fans like? Lovely. Yeah, they are. Pop a sound. Yeah. I think we've got like a dedicated fan base where you, I think some bands don't get that level of like where they like love your band, do you know what I mean? Whereas I think we get that level of, do you know what I mean, super fan level, which is good, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Are any of them too intense and you'd wish they like? Leave it. Miles <laughs> once got a piece of toast and a, a stuffed childhood teddy. So like this girl, like this teddy cat that she'd had for like all time, and she like give it to si Miles. Okay. Because Miles, is it raining? Yeah, so. It's all right, atmosphere, it's how you know we're live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was something to do with what Miles had said on some daft Instagram video you put. Who needs a cat when you got toast or something like that? And then she brought him a cat and toast. Just you know, something silly like that. She's like, she's had, she had that teddy for like 14 years. Yeah. No, they're good, they're a good laugh. Yeah, you, you can't throw that away, you got to keep that now. That's what I mean. Yeah, he's got it somewhere. <laughs> And you're making your main stage debut, Three From Top, just before Liam Gallagher. Yes. How's that? That's that sentence itself is enough to just give you a little bit of a buzz, you know what I mean? Come from the Festival Republic stage two years ago um, to, do you know what I mean? Like you said, Third From Top with Liam Gallagher on afterwards. It's like Child of Dreams stuff, innit? Yeah. Delighted. Well, last time we met at Brit Awards, one of you said that you'd, um, if you met Liam, you'd lick his face. Yeah, it was me. Do you reckon, Do you are, you, are you going to carry that out today? You're Honestly, great. mate. It's on camera now. So we was in Chicago and he walked past me and the first thing I thought was like that shot through my head and I was thinking, <laughs> oh God. And I didn't even say hi or anything. I just let him walk past me. I was like, I would definitely lick his face. That's the, that's the worrying thing that I get him from this now. He wouldn't. We'd <laughs> no, keep him in, right? He'd be like that. I, you know, yeah, that's, I know it would be like that, but I wanted to. That's the worrying thing. So, if you, so you haven't actually conversed with no, him? No, no. Hopefully later on, maybe. Today's the day. Yeah. And then from one brother to another, you're uh, supporting Noel at the Manchester reopening gig. We are, yeah. Well, and that's obviously going to be a pretty special day. You're playing yeah. with your old mates Cortinas, yeah. And it's such a big day for Manchester. I mean, how, how, what does that gig mean to you? We're just delighted. We're honoured to be to be asked to play it. I suppose. Obviously, everyone involved would would rather we didn't have to do something like this. You know what I mean? In the first place, but within the circumstances that the arena had to reopen, and I think it's fitting that a lot of current and great Manchester bands are getting involved, do you know what I mean? And I think it shows people they can go to gigs again, like like we did with the Cortina's Cricket Ground gig, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's similar to that gig, I suppose, the atmosphere. Well, yeah, the atmosphere of that gig was very much just that, like, Manchester won't give up, you can't keep them down. I mean, how did you come away from that gig feeling? Like that, I suppose, like, yeah, yeah, euphoric. Up, it was... like, that's why, like, sits in, like, when it happened, it's like the, the city came together so much. And I think it's going to be another night like that, you know, it's going to be a real sense of unity and stuff, and it'll be... I'm, I, I can't wait for it. All of us are like that. Do you know what I mean? We're all just like, just can't wait to play because it, it'll just be a really nice night and a really nice celebration. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the only way you can look at it. So, it's big night after as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Probably. And another Gallagher I can lick, so it's yeah. all good. So yeah, if you lick Liam, what are you going to do, Noel? Yeah, I'm going to lick Noel as well. Yeah. Or the cheek though. Like two chub chubs. <laughs> 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 and that's uh, in a few weeks. I mean, is that wrapping up the tour after that? Kind of, yeah. This, this feels like the end, really. Like this, this week and next week, we're doing like Jersey Weekender and Best of All, and then that, and that's really it for us for this year. So, yeah, it's strange. To, we've been touring constantly for like the last two and a half years. So, especially since the album came out, it's been non-stop. So, it's, we've done like 90. This would be like the 95th gig of this year or something like that. It's, it's weird getting home when your mum telling you to clean the dishwasher and stuff. Do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> you heard who's playing on that radio in there. <laughs> your mum's going to be inside the stage going, your tea's ready. Yeah. <laughs> True. Get that dishwasher emptied. Sorry, mum. So but, um, is yeah. it uh, focusing on the next record after that? Yeah, well, we've kind of done, we feel like we've pretty much finished it. We've done, got about 12 tunes on, and that's usually enough for an album, but I'm going to try and write a couple more, you know, just see what you can get. If we get another banger, then you're not going to be complaining, are you? Do you know what I mean? So we'll see, yeah, but it's in a very healthy position. Because I think once you told us it was sounding like New Order covering Kylie all the other way around or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's kind of like only one tune that's like that now. Yeah. The rest is quite, it's a bit more upbeat, I'd say. Yeah. Um, it it's good, it's great. It sounds like a record, like a proper album, I'd yeah, say. I think, I, think, I think Tom lyrically has got a lot stronger. Not that he wasn't anyway, but his lyrics are, I don't know, they're, if you listen to the lyrics, he's got a lot, a lot, a lot more. Took a little bit a more, more time more on it, I mean. I was going to say that, yeah. that's not right, is it? That's why I don't write songs, I say things like a lot more clever. <laughs> So, yeah, they're better. <laughs> I mean, obviously, monkeys get away with that. You're a lot more clever like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's they, they can do anything. <laughs> you can, and we'll find out soon. 
But um, so what's been inspiring you lyrically? Because obviously you've been on the road. You're not like an ordinary lad from Stockport anymore. No, I mean, well, do you know what I mean? People come in and out of your life, don't they? So, do you know what I mean? People in your life you write about, I suppose. So, um, <laughs> she's over there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so it, do you know what? You channel what you... I tend to write about relationships, so... Do you know what I mean? Some of the songs were still inspired by breakups in the past, do you know what I mean? Because you can always channel into that. And some of the songs were written still off the back of that. But then, in the last year, I've obviously I've not been feeling like that anymore, so... The kind of there's some, do you know what I mean, positive songs. But I, I always find it's, it's harder to write a song telling someone how much you're into them than when it, things are going sour. Do you know what I mean? It, without it sounding cringy. Do you know what I mean? You got to be a bit cleverer, a yeah. bit more cleverer. <laughs> so um, yeah, so yeah, that's been inspiring me. Then I suppose that, uh, there's a few lyrics where because we have been away a lot. There's a lot of that like distancing, but not in a cringy way. Do you know what I mean? Like I think in a classy way. And if it's going to be, because obviously the success of your first album, obviously I don't think you guys could have predicted that, even though you wanted it and you believed in it. Um, if the next album's all bangers, it's like they only get bigger from here. Do you yeah. see yourselves, Do you, realistically, can you feel yourselves stepping into arenas or maybe yeah. crawling higher up the bill or maybe a headline in a festival like this? Definitely. But especially when you've got two albums on your belt and listening to the songs back and everyone involved who's heard the songs kind of goes, these sound great, do you know what I mean? I don't think there's not a weak song on there. I think again. even how fast we've turned it around, like Tom's managed to write 12 great tunes and we've done it in like I think 20 days we've had in the studio as well as all we've done like this is this will be our like 95th gig this year Shit. so it's like we've managed to do so much in such short space time but I think that proves what we're like as a band yeah. you know what I mean like, as soon as the success of the album was like successful like, everyone was like oh how did you celebrate and stuff but in my, in my head I was like this is when the real work begins you know what I mean you got to get your head down and keep writing songs so that's what I did every every time I was home from being on tour I just wrote I wrote I songs, do you know what I mean? And I knew I was aware of it, do you know what I mean? I weren't like lazy with it. I chased it, do you know what I mean? That's, like, that's you'd stay on top of it. I've had people like Paul Weller, Alex Turner, and people like that who we've bumped into, and they've been like, do you know what I mean? Like, give us advice, and they've always said that you need to keep writing and stuff. Because I think when people, like, even now, people are, oh, do you feel like you've made it? It's like, we're playing a main stage, and do you know what I mean? Third from the top, but no, like, do you know what I mean? Like, for us, making it is when you've got a massive catalogue of albums, you've done really well, and you're still doing main stages, and you're still yeah. doing that. Do you know what I mean? Like, longevity. Yeah, exactly. Longevity is, is, is the key for us to make it. But this again, it's like classic pop songwriting. And they sound like classic songs, like the first one sounded like. Do you know what I mean? You can see the area it's coming from. It's cool. So would you like like to headline Reading in 2019, or would you rather wait till you've got more albums under your belt? Or we just do it, see what comes? I'd definitely yeah. like to headline. Yeah, see what comes. <laughs> yeah, why not? I think two albums is enough to headline. Yeah. Sweet. You heard it here, 2019. <laughs> Blossoms Reading and Leeds. Thanks for your time, boys. No worries, it's mate. Always a pleasure. Always yeah. Cheers, guys. Nice one.